What's up Smarties? It's your girl Aggie, AKA Nurse Ags. Welcome back or to my channel if you're new here. In today's video, I want to share my tips for success in clinicals. For those of you who are new here, I am the newest family nurse practitioner on the block. I just graduated from FMP school last week. And I am here to share with you guys all the tips I have for success in your clinicals, whether you're in nurse practitioner school, PA school, or medical school. So if you're interested, then please keep on watching. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. Let's hop into it. The very first tip I have is to be professional. What does that mean? Arrive to clinicals early, arrive well-groomed, okay? Don't be rolling out of bed and just walking into clinicals with crust in your eyes. Make sure you know you're nice and clean, your hair is well-groomed, your outfit's put together, and that you look ready to work. If you want bonus points, bring in a treat for the office on your first day. I promise you, it'll leave a good taste in their mouth. So the next thing I would like to advise is to be warm and friendly towards your patients. Half of the time, they'll be a little bit wary of having a student um, on board for their care. So you wanna make sure you walk into the room, you introduce yourself with a nice smile on your face. If you're seeing the patient on your own, I often would use the statement, hi, my name is Aggie. I'm going to get you started in Dr. So-and-so or the nurse practitioner will join us in a little bit. I am her nurse practitioner student. I never had a patient object to me when I said that. So I think being warm and friendly and letting them know who you are and your intentions and the role you'll play for their care makes them feel a lot more comfortable. The next thing I would advise is to take notes on what your preceptor teaches you. Whatever the preceptor is telling you um, about management of a patient or about a disease or her approach, his or her approach, I hope you have a notebook out and that you're jotting notes. Not only are you jotting notes, but I want you to later go back home and to review whatever it is they taught you. They took the time to teach you and to do more homework on that topic. This will really help you in your learning and it'll help the information to stick for your future practice or if it gets brought up again in clinicals. So make sure you're taking notes on what your preceptor is teaching you. The next thing I would advise for you to do to succeed in your clinicals is, this is major key, and that is to take the initiative in your learning. Now what does that mean? One, it means taking the initiative to see patients, whether it be on your own, or maybe both, of your, uh, both you and your preceptor go into the room together. It could be taking the initiative, asking them, um, do you want me to go ahead and examine the patient? Showing initiative will make your preceptor eventually get more comfortable with your abilities and they'll give, it'll give them the opportunity to see what you are capable of and um, to kind of see your progress throughout the semester. Um, another way of showing initiative is to ask if you can chart on a patient. This will help you in your learning especially. You'll learn how to chart in your future practice. And what I would do is if I charted on a patient, the next day I would come into clinical early if possible and review the changes my preceptor made on my notes. And that way I can know moving forward how to better chart. Or I would have the opportunity to ask my preceptor about maybe something specific in my charting, what I could have done better, or about a change that they made. So take the initiative and asking if you could chart. A third way to take initiative is kind of going back to what I was saying about seeing patients on your own. The last clinical I had, my preceptor saw up to 30 patients a day. And so both morning and afternoon, we were extremely busy. We were hopping from room to room. At the beginning, I would follow him into each room, and then I realized it would probably be more helpful to him and to my learning if, while he's in one room, I'm in another room. And so that's what I kind of initiated. I asked, you know, if he was going into a room, I would ask him, oh, do you mind if I get so-and-so started next door? And that way I could really be thorough in my interview with that patient. It gave me the time to critically think and to really evaluate that patient's plan of care so that when I stepped out, I was able to present the patient to my preceptor. And also, I would highly recommend this to make your recommendations to your preceptor. That will leave a really good impression for them and it also will force you to start thinking as a provider. 
as registered nurses, we're already excellent at interviewing patients, at doing assessments, it's really the diagnosis or the assessment and then the plan that is a little bit more of a challenge for us and a, is a learning curve. So taking the initiative after coming out of your patient's room and doing their whole interview and exam, take the initiative to let your preceptor know what, you're, what you would like to do with that patient. And I promise you, it'll help both your learning and it'll make an excellent impression on your preceptor. Okay, the next tip that I have is to look up your medications on each patient. Say for example, you're reviewing your patient's chart, you're reviewing their medications, and you see a medication that is, does not look familiar to you, quickly do a search on Google or on one of your phone apps, and that will help the medication stick in your brain. Not only look it up, but write it down. Write down the medication, write down the class of medication it is, its uses, and its common side effects. This will be helpful for you moving forward, and I promise you, after the second or third time of seeing that medication, it'll pop into your head what it's for and why that patient is taking it. So that's my other tip that I have for success in clinicals. The next step I have is to study your preceptor's approach to patient care. What does this mean? The first day or maybe the first week, you'll be mostly shadowing your preceptor to get an idea of how the flow of the office works and how your preceptor interacts with patients and you know their charting system. This is a really crucial time to study how they approach each case. What did they do before entering the patient's room, for example? What did they do in the patient's room? What kind of questions did they ask and why? Study that so you can get a good, a good understanding as to what is expected of you. Um, for example, I noticed in observing my preceptor that he for one, saw a lot of chronic conditions. So he was managing a lot of diabetes, hypertension. He was doing like a routine follow-up on a patient and where they came in for a refill, he would first look at the patient's vital signs, their last lab results, and then the medications they're taking. This would kind of inform his visit a bit and kind of give him some areas to address before going into the patient's room. So after observing that he did that, I would do the same exact thing, review those same stats. So make sure you're setting your provider, your preceptor's approach to patient care, and that'll help you a lot in the long run. And then the final tip I have is for our good old Typhon. If you don't know what Typhon is, it is a commonly used program that graduate schools use for students to log their clinical hours. Now, depending on your program, they have different requirements or expectations on what they want you to put for each patient case. For my program, we had to log like the demographics of the patient, of each patient we encountered, along with the um, billing codes, that's the ICD-10, diagnosis, uh, diagnostic code, and the CPT code. And then we would have to write a brief summary of what that patient encounter looked like. So as you can imagine, that could be quite tedious. And at the beginning, I wanted to, <laughs> I'm not even gonna say what I wanted to do, but I was completely over it. One little tip I would give to navigate that process because we all have to go through it as students is, is to chart or to log your hours on Typhon while at clinicals, not during the clinical day, but either before in the morning or at the end of the day. So that way you can easily like copy and paste the note that you made into Typhon so it's not like you have to double chart so to speak. Also it gives you, um, allows you to quickly see which ICD-10 codes you use in the office so you don't have to think about it when you get back home and have to research it all over again. So. If you can, if you have access to the charting system, I would highly recommend charting your hours while at clinical. A huge time saver, so that is key. And there you have it, you guys. Those are all the tips I have for now on the ways to succeed in your clinicals, whether you're a nurse practitioner, a PA, or a medical student. If you find this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below. And I'll see you guys on the next video.